Now today I'm going to be going over the topic of soy. Now soy has got a bit of a reputation, there's a widely held belief that it lowers testosterone levels, it increases estrogen in men, it even feminizes men and it can affect erections and sperm quality. Now a little bit I've gone over this in another video, but a little bit of estrogen in men is absolutely essential. And estrogen is actually responsible or is involved in normal testicular functioning. So the issue of soy being a, t a testosterone killer or not has kind of split the fitness industry and you've got advocates who are saying avoid it at all costs, it's bad, men should not be consuming it. And you've got the other side, which are saying that it's a highly nutritious food and that it's of no, doesn't make any difference to testosterone levels. I will be referring to my screen. I'm not gonna be, it's a lot of, you know, studies and things to quote here. So I'm gonna be referring to my computer rather than just speaking spontaneously. So forgive me if I keep looking away. Now, I'm not vegan. Because I'm not vegan, I don't consume soy. I've never considered soy. It's not part of my diet. Now, soy is um, a highly nutritious food. It's packed with protein. It has all nine essential amino acids included in it and um, essential micronutrients. It's packed with essential micronutrients. Like, so it's a, it's a nutritious food. I have never consumed it. I'm neither for soy or against it. But the reason that I have never consumed it is because I'm getting all, the, all of those nutrients from other sources and have never really needed to consider it. But for vegans, um, it could be an option for them if they feel that way. Now, <clears throat> soy contains active ingredients which are called phytoestrogens this has led to the widely held belief of course that soy is responsible for increasing estrogen in men now basically these phytoestrogens are believed to be responsible for interfering with hormonal levels by raising estrogen now it's only fair to state at this point that uh, a lot of advocates who are telling men to avoid soy at all costs are also recommending eggs. Now, of course, eggs are a good beneficial food for testosterone. They're also packed with many nutrients that we need, but most importantly of all, eggs or the yellow part of an egg, the yolk, is packed with good cholesterol, which of course is the building block of testosterone. Eggs also contain phytoestrogens, but of course, you know, there's nothing wrong with eating eggs. I, I consume a lot of eggs myself, so, you know, they're a good source of cholesterol, but they do have phytoestrogens present in them. Mm -hmm. Just putting this into context here. Now, here's a thing which might be controversial to some. Now we all know that anabolic steroids mimic testosterone and because they mimic testosterone this starts you know uh, and set a, a system going because enough testosterone is detected in the blood the body does not produce any more testosterone and testosterone production is shut down and the estrogen level rises to compensate for the testosterone that's been introduced into the system. Now, following the same theory, phytoestrogens mimic estrogen. So under the same theory, does this mean that because phytoestrogens mimic estrogen, does the system not detect that there's enough estrogen present in the system so we don't need to make any more? We don't need to convert any more testosterone into estrogen because the system is detecting that there's already estrogen present. Now, of course, this is entirely possible 
as per the laws of nature. If it works that way for steroids, which mimic testosterone, there's no reason why it shouldn't work for phytoestrogens, which mimic estrogen. There are some uh, people who believe this theory. Of course, it's perfectly logical. And there are some people who are against that theory. And have, at the moment, at this point in time, that I'm saying this, there's been no tests to confirm or deny this either way. So more research is needed on this um, to clarify matters. Now, um, now I'm going to, instead of turning around, because I'm neither for soy or against soy, I've had a little look up on the internet and I've, you know, it's a nutritious food. Looking at the nutrient profile in soy, it, I've just mentioned it's packed full of micronutrients, protein, amino acids. On the surface, it seems like a good food. I'm neither for or against the, the soy, so I'm literally sat on the fence in the middle here. I'm just going to give you both sides of the argument. I'm going to be referring to studies on my screen. So now what I'm going to start off with saying now, there have actually been numerous studies that suggest soy is responsible for lower, lowering testosterone levels. But the drawback to that is that 95% of these results have been recorded in animals. There are a few human studies that have delivered similar results, so we'll focus on the human studies and not the animal studies, um, because we, we're humans, we're not, we're not mice. In a 2013 study that showed that men who consumed 20 grams of soy protein every day for two weeks were found to have lower T levels than another group of men who consumed 20 grams of whey protein over the same period. So it seems that, that this is uh, in, the, in the case of soy protein against whey protein, this is how I'm reading this, um, whey protein, which whey protein comes from milk, which comes from a female cow, which is also estrogenic. So bear that in mind for context that um, it's also estrogenic milk in a way. Now, this um, refers to a comparison of protein. Now, the study that most, most advocates of the group, the side who are advocating that men should avoid soy at all costs, they refer to a study from 2007 by Godin et al, which studied 12 men. These 12 men were given 56 grams of soy protein for four weeks. The, they found Serum testosterone decreased by 19% and increased within two weeks of discontinued soy protein use. So they stopped using the protein. It seems to indicate that this soy protein was maybe the culprit. They also found luteinizing hormone levels decreased during the four week period of soy protein use. And then after they stopped using the soy protein, it was stated that the changes did not reach the statistical significance. So they concluded that soy protein powder decreases serum testosterone levels in healthy active men. Now, soy protein is basically, it's a soy isolate in the same way that whey protein is a milk isolate. So, putting it in context there though if it's an isolate an extract kind of thing it's going to have possibly more phytoestrogens in it than just say soybeans or something like that it's just a theory now it's only fair to mention most of the studies that report reduced testosterone levels in men who have taken soy protein 
it refers to soy protein and not all soy foods. Now, here are a few pointers to point out about the studies that I've just mentioned. I will write the details of these studies in the description below. This is a controversial subject, so I'm going to give you all the evidence. You can read these studies for yourself and come to your own conclusion. I'm just going to deliver the facts as I see them from what I've seen. Now, it's only fair to mention that the studies that suggest soy affect testosterone are not 100% on, on, on point because many are lacking a control group. Now, a control group is like, uh, when you have a control group, it's you're basically, these are just men who take soy protein and men who take whey protein. There's no different group who are gonna carry out the same regime without taking anything. Control group, placebo group. Um, basically, uh, most of the studies only focus on a small number of participants and do not represent the majority of men. That opinion is not mine. That's an opinion which comes up in a study that I'm about to refer to in a minute. Most of these studies also failed to collect what would be considered to be crucial data in this argument. They, most of the studies, did not record estrogen levels. So the evidence which would support claims that soy feminizes men by raising estrogen levels is, has not been collected in any of these trials. So. Although they've achieved results that have indicated that soy protein could lower testosterone levels in men when compared to pro whey protein use, there is no group of guys who are not using either product to compare to because for all we know, the whey protein, if they had a control group in the study, the whey protein people may have got le lower testosterone levels than the people who had zero protein product. We don't know because they weren't included. Therefore, the study is not, it's flawed, basically. Now, it seems that when you, when you the research the effects of soy on T levels, it seems that the majority of the evidence on human studies not animal studies, because most of the studies that support the, cl the claim of the advocates that soy is to be avoided at all costs, 95% or more of those studies refer to animals and not humans. Those that do refer to humans are comparisons of whey protein and soy protein, and it shows that estrogenic milk isolate protein outperforms estrogenic soy isolate protein it's not conducive to all sort forms of soy now the the convenience here is that um when analyzing we don't have i didn't have to read through you know shit loads of studies to get this um there were two analytical studies where they the researchers pulled together in the first case it was 30 studies involving over 900 men now in 2010 in a journal called fertility and sterility jm hamilton hamilton reeves et al published an analysis of more than 30 studies involving 900 men they concluded after analyzing all these studies and the results that, quote, I'll quote them, neither soy foods nor isoflavone supplements, which is phytoestrogens, alter measures of bioavailable testosterone concentrations in men. The objectives of this research were pretty detailed now, what they, they sought to, this is, I'm going to quote, quoting the study again, they sought to determine whether isoflavones, phytoestrogens in brackets, exert estrogen-like effects, for example, the feminization of men, 
by lowering bioavailable testosterone through evaluation of the effects of soy protein and phytoestrogen intake on testosterone, sex hormone binding globulin, free testosterone and free androgen indexes in men. As a result of analysing these 30 studies, they found that there were no significant effects on any of those measures. And these studies correlate to studies taken over varying durations of between one month and more than four months of soy consumption. Now it's interesting to note that the study that I mentioned previously in favour of the advocates of avoid protein was included in that study and they even put in the summary that that, that study in particular recorded a 19% drop in T levels in four weeks when comparing soy protein to milk protein. <clears throat> Now there was another analysis published in 2021 that confirmed the 2010 analysis by Hamilton and Reeves et al. And this was published in another journal called Reproductive Toxicology. This report resulted from the analysis of 41 studies which took place between 2010 and 2020. This analysis involves data recorded on the observations of more than 1,700 men. They also reached a similar conclusion that they did not find any link between soy consumption and testosterone levels. Now in total, that amounts to 71, more than 71 human studies involving over 2,600 men. Now, um, In a recent study in China in 2021, monitoring the effects that increasing intake of soybean oil had on the synthesis of testosterone in Leydig cells, concluded that increasing intake of soybean oil can actually lead to elevated testosterone levels. This is, of course is an isolated study. It's the only study that actually says soy can raise testosterone levels. Um, now, before you go rushing out the door thinking, oh, oh, like the, you know, you must have heard of the, the Coca-Cola and in testosterone increases that was recorded in mice and insinuated to be men. Well, before you go rushing out the door to stock up on soy, that study in China was on mice as well. In mice, the strangest things will elevate their T levels, but that doesn't, it does not correspond necessarily to humans. Now, on further analysis, it actually seems that only a small amount of evidence that is, there is that confirms that soy is a testosterone killing food. A couple of isolated studies, a handful of small handful of isolated studies that have shown results in favor of that, that side of the argument. And there is no available evidence at all that, co that confirms that soy feminizes men because they didn't record the men's estrogen levels in these trials. Now, there is actually a source to the story. And here, you know, this, it's where, this is how it all happened. A lot of these guys who are advocates of or anti-soy, are a lot of them are in their 20s, so, you know, we're in 2023, they would have been too young to be following scientific studies and all the rest of that. You know, but there was a story that went viral in 2008 concerning a man who got gyno, and this was attributed to him consuming soy. This guy, what they didn't say, when this story went viral, is this man literally sat on a sofa all day playing video games, drinking three litres of soy milk every day. Now, three litres of soy milk, three litres of cow's milk, three litres of any milk, 
per day is not going to do you any favours anyway. Add a sedentary lifestyle. He probably ate processed foods. He sat in front of a games console all day. You know, he's probably picking up the phone to order pizza, burger or whatever other crap he could get delivered to the house so that he didn't have to pull himself away from the screen. They don't mention any of this. You know, they just got that connection. Soy, milk, boobies, you know, two plus two equals five. Now, before you know it, you know what the internet's like. Bam, stories all around the world and you've got influencers and nutritional experts and all kinds of people now telling men not to avoid soy at all costs. You know, it's you know, a lie. You tell a lie often enough and it goes around the world a few times. It becomes true in the end. Human history um, proves there are many incidents in human history which have confirmed this. You know, now let's be realistic. Three litres of soy milk per day is to an excess and i personally i would say the guy know that this guy suffered was more down to probably eating a lot of processed food a lot of trans fats sat in front of a computer screen all day you know no physical activity apart from the fingers moving on the games controller you know those things you know and not, no doubt they're going to have contributed towards his his, his gyno and his, you know, the guy's testosterone levels were not recorded by the way so whether or not he had low testosterone or high estrogen is unknown he was just an overweight guy who got gyno and he happened to be drinking three litres of soy milk per day that is where this whole thing originated from I've tra tra tracked it back in time there's not a lot of talk that I could find involving soy and testosterone levels before that date. So um, it seems that this is where the story originated from. But when you think, you know, you think eggs contain phytoestrogens and it's the phytoestrogens, the, the camp, which are anti-soy and are advocates that men should avoid, avoid soy at all costs. It's the phytoestrogens, which mimic estrogen, that have been attributed to the drug decreases in testosterone levels. Now, if that theory, following that theory, eggs contain phytoestrogens, but eggs are actually good for testosterone levels. So if you take eggs, let's separate, take push soy to one side for the moment. That theory where if you consume phytoestrogens, and which, which mimic estrogen, then the system detects enough estrogen and doesn't need to convert any more testosterone into estrogen, meaning that it would actually improve testosterone levels. The eggs, which contain phytoestrogens, of course, support that theory because they contain phytoestrogens and they actually contribute towards elevated testosterone levels in an indirect way because they provide much needed cholesterol which is the building block of uh, building block of testosterone now it's a good healthy source of cholesterol even though it contains phytoestrogens so <clears throat> i'll put the links to those studies uh in the video because this is a highly controversial topic uh in theory you know in summary sorry i'm gonna have to say from my position of being sat on the fence in the middle most of the evidence supports the fact that soy does not harm testosterone levels and does not feminize men. But of course, more, more evidence is needed. Um, you should be careful where you're getting your information from because, you know, a stupid viral story in 2008, which literally went round the world in a couple of days, you know, look at what, look at where it's ended up today. Now, if you want to get everything, you want to get your testosterone levels optimized and keep them optimized for longer into life. I've written a book about testosterone and everything that I've done to maintain my own testosterone levels into old age. Um, the link to that is in the description down below. You'll also find in, in the description down below, I will, I've re made reference to the studies that I've referred to in this video. Please feel free to go and check them out and you know, see for yourselves. And then the next time you 
see some guy come on the screen, you know, telling you, no, 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 don't eat soy. Or if you're a vegetarian and you're eating soy and you're com concerned about that because, you know, take away this argument about soy and testosterone. Soy actually has a really good nutritional profile. You know, it, it has nutritional benefits. It's not like, you know, Coca-Cola, which is absolutely worthless, wasted calories that gives you nothing whatsoever. Soy actually gives you quite a lot when you think about it. So, you know, is it that bad? You know, now my verdict is I am now of the opinion that soy, that the evidence points towards soy not being responsible for the feminization of men. And maybe those men are looking for excuses. Now, if you want to achieve total equilibrium in your mind, your body and your soul, subscribe to this channel because I've got lots and lots of interesting comment, com content coming real soon.